على سيرات مستقيم تعزيل العزيز الرحيم لتوذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد أقى القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في عناكهم غلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمعون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فاغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم ما أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع ذكر خشي الرحمن بالغيب فبغشره بمغفرة واجر كريم إنا نحن نحيا الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء نحصيناه في إمام مبين وضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاء أهل مرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فقذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم من لا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب عليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من نقص المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم مجر وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أتخذوا من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينكذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم قامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم محلتنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا مهدرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة وحييناها وأخرجنا منها هبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملت ويديهم فلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وعيد لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر والليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وأعيد لهم أن حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن شعن غرقهم فلا صريق لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومزاعن إلهين 
وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين عيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا أنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أن يطعموا من لو يشاء الله وتعمه إن أنتم إلا في ظلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخسمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفق في السور فإذا هم من الجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا مهدرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وزواجهم في ذلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتازوا اليوم أيها المجرمون ألا ما حد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أذل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على عيونهم فاستبقوا السراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضي ولا يرجعون ومن نعمر ننقص في القلق فلا يقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا عنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا نعاما فهم لها مالكون وذلناها لهم فمنها رقوبهم ومنها يكونون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب فلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينسرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند مهدرون فلا يحزن قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون ولم يرى الإنسان أن أخلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العذام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشاها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون سورة المباركة الفاتحة
ஷை ஷைபிஸ்ம <laughs> ஜ <laughs> அல்லாஹும்ஸ்தீக் <laughs> முதல்லாமணி வரமணி ஜமீலாஜத்துவ அல்லாஹும்ஜிதுனூபிராஃபிராஜிதுனூபிராஃபிராஜிதுனூபிராஃபிராஜிதுனூபிராஃபிராஜிதுனூபிராஃபிராஜிதுனூபிராஃபிரா
وكم من اثار وكيت وكم من مكروه دفعت وكم من صناع جميل لست احلل له نشرت اللهم اعظم بلائي وافرط بي سوء حالي وكسرت بي اعمالي وكادت بي اغلالي وحبسني النفس بوضع امالي وخذتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بجنايتها ومتالي يا سيدي فعسلك بعزتك لا يحجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفزحني بخفي ما اتلات عليه من سر ولا تعجلني بالعقوبة على ما عملته في خلوات من سوء فعلي وإساتي ودوام تفريتي وجعلتي وكثرتي شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال رؤوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور أتوفا إلهي ومولاي وربي من لي غيرك أسألوا كشف الضر والنظر في عمري إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكما اتبعت في هوى نفسي ولم أحترس به من تزيني عدوي فغرني بما أحوى وأسأده على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعض هدودك وخالفت بعض عوامرك فلك الحمد علي في جميع ذلك ولا عجة لي فيما جرى علي في قضاءك والزمني حكمك وبلاءك وكذا أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تكسيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتدرا نادما منكسرا مستكيلا مستغفرا منيبا مكرا مضئنا معترفا لا أجد مفرا مما كان مني ولا مبزا أتوجه إلي في أمري غير قبولك أذري وإذا خالك إياي في سعة رحمتك اللهم فاكبال أذري وارحم شدة ذري وفكني من شد وثاق يا رب رحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدا خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتغذيتي هبني لابتداء كرمك والسالف برك بي يا إلهي وسيدي وربي أتراك معذبي بنارك بعد توحيدك وبعد من توى عليه قلبي من معرفتك ولي جبي لسان من ذكرك ما تكدو ضميري من حبك وبعد صدق اعترافي ودعائي خاضيا لربوبيتي هيهات أنت أكرم من أن تزيع من ربيت 
أو تبعد من عدنيت أو تشرد من آويت أو تسلم إلى البلاء من كفيته ورحمت وليت شعري يا صيدي وإلهي ومولاي أتسلط النار على وجوه خرت لأضمتك الساجدة ولا ألسن نتكت بتوحيدك الصادقة وبشكرك مادحا وعلى قلوب اعترفت بإلهيتك محققا ولا ضمائر حوت من العلم بك حتى صارت خاشيا ولا جواري أسات الأوطان تعبدك الطائيا وأشارت باستكفارك مضعنا ما هكذا الظن بك ولا أخبرنا بفضلك أنك يا كريم يا ربي وأنت تعلم ضعفي أن كليل من بلاء الدنيا وكوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها ألا أن ذلك بلاء ومكرون كليل مكثور يسير بقاؤه كسير مدته فكيف احتمال لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وكوء المكاري فيها وهو بلاء تتول مدته ويدوم مكامه ولا يخفف عن أهله لأنه لا يكون إلا عن غضبك وانتقامك والسخطك وهذا ما لا تقوم له السماوات والعرض يا سيدي فكيف لي وعنا عبدك الضعيف الضليل الحقير المستكين المستكين يا إلهي وربي والسيد ومولاي لعي الأمور إليك أشكو ولما منها عضج وأبكي لأليم الأضاء بوشدة أملتوا للبلاء ومدة فلعن سيرتني في الأكوبات مع دائك وجمعت بيني وبين أهل بلائك وفرقت بيني وبين أحبائك وأوليائك فهبني يا إلهي والسيدي ومولاي وربي سبرت على ضابئك فكيف أصبر على فراقك وحبني سبرت على حر نارك فكيف أصبر على النظر إلى كرامتك أم كيف أسكن في النار ورجائي أفو فبزتك يا سيدي ومولاي أقسم صادقا لئن تركتني ناتك لا ضيجن إليك بين أهلها ضجيج العاملين ولا أسرخن إليك سراخ المستسرخين ولا أبكين إليك بكى الفاقدين ولو نادي أنك إن كنت يا ولي المؤمنين يا غاية أعمال العارفين يا غياث المستغيثين 
Ya Habibakulu bin Wa ya ilala lamina faturaka subhanaka ya ilahi wa bihamdik Tasma'u fiya sawt abdin muslimin Sujina fiya bi mukhalafatin Wa dhaka ta'ma dhabiya bi ma'asiyatihi Wa humisa baynat baqiha bi jurmihi wa jariratihi Wa wa yadhijju ilayka zajija mu'ammilin li rahmatik Wa yunadika bilisaun ahli tawheedik Wa yatawassalu ilayka birububiyyatik Ya Mawlaya, fakaifa yabka fil azabi wa huwa yarju ma salafa min hilmika wa ra'fatika wa rahmatika Am kaifa tulimu al-nar wa huwa ya'mulu fadlaka wa rahmatak Am kaifa yuhriku lahi buha Wa anta tasma'u sawtaw wa tara makana Am kaifa yashtamilu alayhi zafirwa Wa anta ta'lamu dha'afa Am kaifa yatakalkalu bayna atbaakiha Wa anta ta'lamu sidka Am kaifa tasjuru zabaniyatwa Wa wa yunadika ya rabba Am kaifa yarju fadlaka fitki minha Fatatruku fiha Hayat ma dhalika dhannu bi'i Wala al-ma'roofu min fadli Wala mushbi'un lima maltabil muwahidina Min birrika wa ahsanik Fabil yaqeen yaktaw lawla ma hakam tabi Min ta'zib jahidik Wa qazay tabi min ikhlaad mu'anidik Laja'alta al-nar kullaha bardan wa salamah Wa ma kana liyahadin fiha makarran wa la muqaaman Lakinna kaw takaddasat asma'u Aksam ta'al tamla'u min al-kafirin Min al-jilnati wa al-nasi ajma'in وأن تخلد في المعاندين وأن تجل ثناؤك كلت مبتديا وتتولت بالإنام متكرما أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستوون Ilahi wa sayyidi fa'as'aluka bil kudrati allati qaddartaha wa bil qadiyyati allati atamtaha wa hakamtaha wa ghalabta man alayya jurayitaha anta habali fi hadin layla wa fi hadis sa'a كل جرم أجرمت وكل ذنب أزنبت وكل كبير أسررت وكل جهل عملت كتمت وعلنت أكفيت ووضحرت وكل سيئة عملت بإثبات الكرام الكاتبين الذين وكلتم بيبز ما يكون مني وجعلتم شهودا علي مع جواره وكنت أنت ركيب علي من ورائه والشاهد لما خفي عنهم وبرحمتك أفيت وبفضلك سترت وأن توفر عظيم كل خير أنزلت أو إحسان فضلت أو بر نشرت أو رزق 
ஸ்மாக் ஜலோக்கிரிக்கோலாத்தீரோதீவாத وحالي في خدمتك سرمدا يا سيدي يا من علي معولي يا من لي شكوت احوالي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب كوي على خدمتك جواره وَاشْدُدْ عَلَى الْعَزِيمَةِ جَوَانِهِ وَحَمْلِ الْجِدَّ فِي خَشْيَتِكَ وَالدَّوَامَ فِي الْإِتِّسَالِ بِخِدْمَتِكَ حَتَّى أَسْرَى إِلَيْكَ فِي مَيَادِينِ السَّابِقِينَ وَأُسْرِ إِلَيْكَ فِي الْمُبَارِزِينَ وَأَشْتَاكَ إِلَى كُرْبِكَ فِي الْمُشْتَاقِينَ ஜலிமின்சனி <laughs> முத்தைய <laughs> ஜி <laughs> ஜின்னி <laughs> ஜ <laughs> முஹம்மது <laughs> <laughs> 
Wa sallallahu ala rasuli wa laimatil mayamina min alihi wa sallama tasliman kathira Rahmallahu man kara' surat al-barakatul fatiha ma kahe ti thi uth jaag meri jaan sakina कहे ती थी उठ जाग मेरी जान सकीना उठ घर को चले खुल गया जिंदान सकीना माँ कहती थी उठ जाग मेरी जान सकीना बुंदे जो तेरे शेम्र ने छीने वो दिला दूं एक नन्ही सी चादर मैं तेरे सर पे उड़ा दूं घर जाने का अब हो गया सामान सकीना माँ कहती थी उठ जाग मेरी जान सकीना एक बार मेरे सीने से लग जा जरा उठ कर कहती थी ये माँ कब्र सकीना से लिपट कर कुछ देर के हम तेरे मेहमान सकीना माँ कहती थी उठ जाग मेरी जान सकीना मासूम से गालों पे तमाचे भी हैं खाए रो रो के कहा करती थी बाबा नहीं आए रोता है तेरे 
ساتھ زندان سکینا ماں کہتی تھی اٹھ جاگ میری جان سکینا اٹھتی نہیں لاک اٹھایا ہے کئی بار لو مر ہی گئی آج وہ بابا کی ازادار لب کھول ذرا ما ہے پریشان سکینا ماں کہتی تھی اٹھ جاگ میری جان سکینا رونے کی صدا آتی ہے زندان سے اکثر مر کے بھی رہائی نہ ملی ہے جسے اختر سنسان سا ہے آج کیوں زندان سکینا ماں کہتی تھی اٹھ جاگ میری جان سکینا اٹھ گھر کو چلے کھل گیا زندان سکینا ماں کہتی تھی اٹھ جاگ میری جان سکینا پر محمد والے محمد صلی سید حسن رزی my respected elders brothers and sisters in iman السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Surah Fatiha is requested for the Mahumeen's name that's on the screen, all the Mahumeen, Al-Fatiha. Dua Shafai Mariz is requested for the name that's on the screen, and whoever is ill here and elsewhere around the world, let's just say it together. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم امان یجیب المسترع زادہ ہو یکشف سو 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 At this time, let's welcome Sayyid Hassan Rizzi to come forward and say to Naisman, let's pray Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة
أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إلا بالله العلي العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا والنبينا وحبيب قلوبنا والشفيع نفوسنا والطبيب ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجن فرجهم ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المذلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الأولين والآخرين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد صلوات على محمد وآل محمد مؤمنين مؤمنات Brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Last time we finished our discussion on the section of the Dua of Rajab, Ya man yu'ti al-kathir bil-qaleel. Calling Allah, the one who gives a lot, gives kathir through or in lieu of a little bit, al-qaleel. We talked about what true generosity is, that a truly generous person gives without first being asked, and that they don't have any expectations in return. And that Allah's generosity is something which is disproportionate, meaning we give nothing in compared to what Allah gives to us. And He guarantees for us at least 10 times what we give Him. If not that, then 700 times. And then in other places, in other ayat, He says no. What I give is unlimited, and beyond that, it's unimaginable. It's unfathomable. You can't understand the reward that you'll be getting from me. And in fact, if you look closely at the barakat, the ni'mat, the blessings, the gifts that Allah gives, what we see in front of us is al-qalil. It's just a little bit. But behind that is al-kathir. It's a lot. So it gives us all of this, this existence, this life, all the blessings, the mercy, all of this, wrapped in a very, very small, tight, nice package. And he says that, from the, saw from the uh, hadith, that Allah will continue to bless certain individuals with a lot. Give them a lot more than other people, as long as they, they share. Allah gives certain people more, so that they can go act as a wasila on his behalf, and share that out with others who may not have that same blessing. But, if those individuals hoard, if they keep those blessings to themselves, then Allah says, I cut that off, and then I'll move those blessings to somebody else. So this is what we had said last time. Now we want to continue on to the next line of the dua. Before we do that, I want to pause and just take a look at where we've reached so far in the dua, right? Because there's some crucial points that we've met, and I want to keep everything that we've been talking about in perspective. Now, remember the... I want to remind you about the background for the dua, right? A companion came to our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far Sadaq, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi And if you remember, he had asked for something. He said, right, I, you know, give me something. Give me a dua, especially in this holy month. Give me something that will cause and will lead God to giving me something beneficial. That's what he's asking for. So remember this is what the Imam has in his mind as he's giving him and teaching this companion, and then, of course, to all of us, what exactly should we be reciting? At the beginning of this dua, there are four nida'at. There's four nida's, right? Nida, ya'ani, ya, right? We're saying ya man something, ya this, ya that. Ya, we know, we see the translation, it means oh, right? We're calling out to somebody. In Arabic, this ya that we see is called harfu nida. Right? Or technically, it's a vocative particle. It's the particle that you use when you want to call and grab somebody's attention, whether they're in front of you or not. Right? So if you're, you know, in Arabic, you're calling out to somebody, you might say, Ya akhi, you know, oh brother, you're trying to get somebody's attention. 
Ya Ahmad, right? Whatever their name is. So of course, you know, when we say Ya Ali, we're calling out to Imam Ali with no problems, of course. You know, I don't think I have to explain that there's no issue in doing something like that. So we're calling out. In this dua, there are four, right in the beginning, there's four specific calls that are being made, right? The first one we said, Ya man arjuhu li kulli khair, wa amanu sakhatuhu anna kulli shar. And then we're going to move on to the next two today, right? I'm forgetting. These four calls, if we take a kind of step back and put them all together, they're, in a sense, perhaps answering four unique, distinct questions about what we should keep in mind if we're actually trying to have Allah grant us something beneficial. So the four questions that we keep in our mind are a who, what, whom, and why. Who, what, whom, and why. Two of these we've examined so far. So the first is who. In the sense of who exactly should we be calling? If I want Allah to be giving me these benefits, manfa'a, something which is beneficial for my life, who, what kind of Allah should I be calling? Which Allah am I going to be calling out? That's why we say, ya man arjuhu li kulli khair. Right? We're talking to the one that's the source of all khair. That's the type of Allah. That's the who in that question. Which sort of Allah do we need to be calling out? Or in another way, who is the giver here? The one that's going to be granting us these blessings, the barakat, the ni'mat, these things which are beneficial for all of us, is one, is who? It's the source of all khair. That's the one. And it's also the one that you and I should be feel safe from any sort of punishment because we recognize that he's the source of all khair. So anything that happens to us, it's for our benefit. So this is why we say, who are we calling out? It's the positive source of all blessings, of all khair, of all goodness, even when we sin. And we have that hope continuously towards him. That's the who. That's the first question. The second question then comes in the next part. It's the what. Ya ma yu'til kathir bil qalil. So we're then saying, okay, well, now that we know who we're calling to, who are we asking from, now, okay, well, what are you going to give me? What are you going to gift me? What sort of good things are you going to grant me, Allah? That's the what now. What is the actual gift? What's the benefit? What am I going to get? So, ya man yu'til kathir bil qalil. If you want to know, I'm going to give you a lot of things. And it might look like a little. I'm going to give you a lot of things, even if you do just a small amount in return. So that's the, the sort of what there. Now, the third question is whom? Whom with an M at the end. Okay, we know who we're calling out, who we're talking to. We now know what we're going to be getting in return. What are the gifts? And now we ask the question, to whom will Allah give these blessings? Who will be the recipient? Who gets these gifts? To whom will this gift, this blessing, this manfa'a, the barakah, the ni'mah, who gets this? Will it be everybody? Or will, will it only be certain individuals? Ya mayu'ti man sa'ala. So the first is that we're calling out to Allah saying, you are going to give to somebody who asks for it. Or very simply put, ask and you shall receive. So that is our going, that's going to be our discussion for tonight. We may continue on tomorrow night depending on how far we get. The fourth question also in a future session we will get that as well. So tonight we're going to be discussing this idea of asking Allah. Dua, hajat, right? We're just making requests from Allah. It seems very simple. Allah saying, you know, you call me and I'll give it to you. It seems very simple. But the topic of du'as is still something that confuses even the veteran Muslim to this day. We have all these issues sitting in the back of our mind, right? A typical issue that I'll hear from both young and old is this. Why do we have to ask Allah in the first place? What's the point? If Allah is alim, al-alim, he knows everything, why do I have to say something out loud and say, Allah, give me this, Allah, give me that. Allah help this person, Allah help that person, protect these people. If Allah already knows it, what's the point in me saying it out loud? What benefit does it give to Allah? None. He already knows what to do. He has knowledge of everything. 
And in fact, some people even take it further that since he already knows everything and he controls everything, what's the point of my dua? How is that going to change anything in the first place? What's the point of all these things? So this is, these are some of the issues that you and I may think about. Now, even if we can answer that question, okay, I get it. I have to make dua, I have to use words, fine. But how exactly do we do it? How do we speak to God? How do we speak to Allah? What words do I use? In narrations, it explains it differently, right? Some of the narrations say you start with a salawat, you ask what you want, and then you end with a salawat, okay, and then it's going to be answered. Other duas, even when we look in some narrations from the Ahlul Bayt, they don't necessarily start with a salawat or end with it in a lot of the duas. Some do, but not all of them. So do we, you know, start with the salawat and end with the salawat? Do we follow exactly what they're saying? I mean, look at this dua. There's no salawat in the beginning and there's no salawat at the end. Do we add it in on, on our own or do we say no? Exactly how it's mentioned in the narration, we stick to that. Then somebody asks, okay, well, if the Ahlul Bayt made dua a certain way, well, I'm not at their level. Do I just copy their words or do I speak to Allah in my own words? What is the actual formula that we should be using? And then even if I, can, if I can figure out a formula, right, whether it's one salawat or, you know, salawat at the, at the end, or I'm supposed to say certain names of Allah in the beginning, whatever it is, what do I ask for? Okay, I send my salawat at the beginning and the end. Now do I say, okay, Allah, give me specific things. You know, Allah, I need a raise. From my, you know, my job is good, thank you so much, but I need, you know, at least, uh, whatever, uh, $10,000 raise. Do I give specifics to Allah? Do I make my du'as conditional? Do I be vague? You know, what am I supposed to do? Should I demand from God? Do I command Him? Or do I say, you know, please, what, do I sh what should I actually say and do? It can be confusing. And I've heard many ulama give, you know, sometimes conflicting answers. Then, okay, we know what to say, we know how to say it, I know what to ask for. Does that guarantee that Allah will respond to everybody equally? If we all use the exact same format, and let's say, ask for the exact same thing, does that guarantee that Allah will respond to each and every one of us in the exact same manner, in the exact same way? Now, we may think that the, we probably understand the answer is going to be no, but why? If we're using the formula that, the, that Allah has given, that the Ahlul Bayt have given, then shouldn't we all get the same response then? If we're using what God has told us, you know, why is there going to be a difference there? Or, very specifically, forget everybody else. Why isn't he answering my du'as very specifically? I do everything that he asks. Right? I, I keep up my wajibat. I don't do anything that's haram. I do all the mustahab stuff. I give charity. I volunteer. All these things. I'm asking for very simple things, God. Right? Something that I might need. Something that my family might need. Something that my friends might need. My you know, relatives overseas. Political things. You know? Why can't you grant that? What's going on there? I know that you're saying it's for the greater good, but I'm still missing out on something. What is it? What's the problem with our du'as maybe? That we have to think about that hopefully we'll answer in the light of tonight's discussion and possibly for tomorrow night. So what we'll try to do is answer this. Now, again, we can go into deep philosophical discussions. I said I want to try to stay away from that on Thursday nights. What I'd like to do instead is this. I want to try to answer all of these questions in a short, concise way but only by referring to two ayat of the Qur'an. That's it. I don't want to go deep into philosophy or an irfan or anything like that. I just want to rely on two ayat of the Qur'an where Allah seems to answer all of these questions. But as we'll see, the reason maybe we have, we've seen these ayat, and as I mentioned them, you'll know that, yeah, we've heard them. We don't see the answers there. The answers might be there, but maybe we haven't done enough tafakkur. Maybe we haven't reflected upon the ayat enough. Or as we say, tadabbur fil Qur'an deep reflection about these verses. So that's what we want to try to do tonight and inshallah we'll probably continue on tomorrow night inshallah ta'ala if you can recite as salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now of course again we can look at many different ayat we can look at a lot of ahadith I want to try to you know, simplify the discussion as best as possible and offer a good analogy that I think most of us can understand. So the first verse that I would like to look at the first ayah, sorry, I have to get out of the habit of saying verse, right? It's an ayah, not a verse. Is in Surah Al-Ghafir, Surah 40, Ayah 60. A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Wa qala rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum. So, and Allah said, or he said, 
قال ربكم your رب said ادعوني make dua right call to me supplicate to me make duas to me استجيب لكم I'll respond to you very simple right it seems like it's straightforward what Allah is saying here so for the first question you know why do we have to you know talk to Allah why do we have to make these duas why do we have to say anything well I mean Allah is saying talk to me tell me if you believe in Allah you believe in the Quran he's giving a command he's saying just you know I'm telling you to talk to me so hopefully I mean I know that that never answers the question right it's not simply that Allah said so and then we do it we're looking for something beyond that I understand no problem right one of the reasons maybe maybe why we don't like to verbalize things that are within us Allah seems to also mention at the end of this ayah as well and the after after he says all of this he seems to say something which at the surface level seems unrelated but perhaps according to mufassirin this is actually related right so first he says wa qala rabbukum your rabb says ud'uni astajib lakum call me and i'll respond to you and then allah adds in this ayah at the end inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati so without a doubt those individuals yaks yastakbirun who have takabbur who have pride and arrogance right think a lot of themselves an ibadati not anything but specifically in terms of their ibadah towards me towards allah you know they don't really think much about ibadah about worship right usually these are the ones who rationalize everything you know i know that this this doesn't harm anybody what's the big deal you know this is just stuff which for 1400 years ago it has nothing to do with us today time and place things have changed we've progressed you know we're a scientific modern society all this you know, worship stuff that's for you know the bronze age it's not for us anymore muslims shia say that to this day right that's a sort of takabbur it's a pride then what does allah say sayyid khuluna jahannam dakhirin then they will possibly enter into jahannam into hell you know dakhirin in in a contemptible way i mean why would you blame somebody like that allah said you believe me yeah okay i understand allah you believe in the quran i think maybe maybe parts of it well okay do you want to take all of the quran or just some of the quran do you want all of allah or just a part of allah you want all of islam or just you know whatever parts that you like right this is not a buffet islam is not a buffet you don't get just just to pick whatever parts that you like if you do that then allah say okay fine i'm also going to you know treat you as a buffet as well the good things you did okay fine i'll reward you for that but you've got a lot of other bad things on you and takabbur is not something that is light pride and arrogance is not something that allah takes lightly even a small amount of that allah says look that's going to lead you to hellfire because that's going to ruin your akhira it's going to ruin your dunya too especially when it has to do with that worship and connection with allah how can you and i improve in life if every single thing that allah is asking us to do we just deny it we literally are saying you know what allah i understand that you're god you created everything but i'm going to make some decisions about my life you mean na'udhu billah you don't really matter in most phases and most spheres and dimensions of my life that's what most of us are really saying when we say that this ibadah doesn't matter i don't need to really you know wake up and pray like this i don't need to fast for this i don't need to do any of this that sort of arrogance allah is saying that can lead us to jahannam it can lead us to hellfire but again at the other side allah is saying call me Res- you know ask me and i'm going to respond to you so this idea of calling dua it's for humble individuals those who have khushu and humility those who don't want to verbalize it that means that there's some sort of takabbur in their hearts that they're not willing to get rid of this is the first point if you can recite a salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad <laughs> So already just in a superficial look at the ayah we've already taken care of hopefully one of the questions. Now we can go even deeper. It's interesting, right? It's not saying, you know, Allah said call me. It's not saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah is saying wa qala rabbukum. Your rabb is saying, your rabb has said, you know, call me. Your rabb is saying make dua to me. Ask, tell me what you want and then I'll respond to you. think about this quality of rububiya of allah as the rub now normally when we see this in these translations and you know at this point all of you know how i feel about translations what does it say even here right and i'm sure it may even say, it might say there it says lord what does that mean lord lord does that really get the point of rub across not at all rub is if we're actually going to try to offer some sort of translation using an actual tafsir method an interpretive method 
then rub should probably be, probably be translated as nourisher, sustainer. Or if we really want to go deeper into it, probably the best way to translate it would be mother, loving mother. Why? Because rub doesn't just represent, you know, uh, any sort of parent or loving figure, but it represents that motherly sort of love that sometimes even fathers may not have. Usually, again, this is a generalization, but we see this. Usually fathers, you know, of course they have love, but their expression of love is usually a bit more, you know, it's strict, it's to the point, it's very rational, right? Black and white, right? If the child has a problem, then here's the solution, just do it. And even with our spouses, right? With our wives, we act the same way. I've heard, I remember um, um, Brother Khalil Jafar in one of his lectures, he was mentioning this point as well, right? That, you know, for, for guys, if your wife tells you, you know, I have a headache, What's the solution? Say, take an aspirin. Like, you know, what's, the, what's, the, you know, what's so difficult about that? We, whenever we see a problem, we just want to say, here's the solution. You know, why are, we, why are you struggling? Why are you crying? Why are you complaining? But usually there's much more, you know, it's not simply just the headache. There's something else that's there. Conversation or stress or anxiety. They want something else unpacked. They want time or, you know, some quality time being spent. It's not always just, you know, give me a pill and that's it, I'm done. But sometimes, you know, our, you know, our emotional intelligence we're lucky if it's at 1%, right? Most of us, we would fail at that. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very, very bad at that. Most AI probably does better than me, right? At figuring out people's emotions. You know, I'm terrible at reading those, those things. So when we're talking about Rab, it's not just somebody who's maintaining, somebody who's nourishing, or somebody who's sustaining things. This is that parental, specifically that motherly type of quality, that subtle quality, that love that overlooks all deficiencies that looks to that child, when a mother looks at the child and says, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, I have to express as much beautiful love as possible. That's a better understanding of Rabb. So now, take that in mind. This, the way Allah is saying it here in the Quran, is saying, your Rabb, your loving mother, right? Of course, again, I don't, know, I don't need to say this out loud, but just in case, we're not assigning gender to Allah, right? The idea is to try to get an abstract idea of Allah, right? Of, of Rabb specifically. Now, does he have fatherly qualities too? Yeah. That's a different discussion. Right here, Rub is more of those motherly, loving, beautiful qualities right? in that relationship. So, the analogy we want to understand when we're talking about dua is beautiful here because Allah seems to be reminding us about the relationship between parents and children. About how parents satisfy and take care of the needs of their children. And how a child in turn needs to respect and speak and communicate with their parents. From this, from this ayah, we can unpack a lot more there, if you can recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We're going to use the different levels and types of children or relationships between a parent and a child. We're going to use that as an analogy to talk about our own relationship with Allah. All of us, in terms of Allah, we have different maturity levels. We speak to Allah in different ways, or sometimes not at all, right? Assuming we even speak. Now, in terms of those who maybe don't speak and don't recognize Allah, that we're, we're going to address either tomorrow night or in our next session, right? Somebody who does not, you know, do su'a, who doesn't ask Allah. That's the next ya that we're going to talk about, the next line of, of the dua of Rajab. Right now, the dua that we're saying is somebody who, yurti man sa'lahu, who's asking Allah. So that's what we want to talk about. So the infant level, we're going to leave for another night. We're going to jump right to the next level. So we have an infant who is nonverbal, who can't really speak to their parent. The next level is a toddler. See, a toddler is what? A toddler now is somebody, a human, which has learned the basic ability to verbalize their needs. Not every need, but some of their needs, right? They're very selective about what they're able to express. So some toddlers may be able to express that they have to go to the bathroom, right? If they're learning or in that, they're in that potty training phase. But some toddlers, if they're not at that phase, they're not ready yet, they can't verbalize it, right? They'll end up leaking or going on, you know, your floor or a carpet, right? So some things they can verbalize, some things they can't. They may say, you know, I want to play, I want to do this, I want to eat this. Sometimes they can do it, sometimes they can't. So what a toddler at this stage recognizes is this. They know that they are dependent partially upon their parents. They know that there are certain things that only their parents are going to give them. Maybe that they know that their favorite food or candy or snack is, you know, a uh, uh, high level, right? I don't think it's top cabinet. They know they can't reach it. So they have to tell their parents that, okay, can you please go get that for me? 
Although some of them, if they've learned the right way, they might start climbing and seeing if they can reach it, right? Or maybe if they're looking for, you know, a game or they want to play something on a device. They know that it's locked with a password. They know that they have to ask their parent to unlock it. So they, ha they know that, look, I'm partially dependent. But at the same time, there's certain things that I can do on my own. Maybe they can reach the faucet. Maybe they can open the fridge. Maybe they can grab a few things and they can do it on their own. Maybe there's some toys around. They don't have to ask you to get it. They can go and take it out themselves. So they recognize that they're partially dependent, but they're also partially independent as well. At the same time, in terms of the way that they're able to verbalize and express what they need, that's also partial, right? There are certain things they can express to you and they can tell you, I need this, I want this. But at other times, they're not able to understand what's going on inside of them. They don't know what they need. And that's where a good parent needs to jump in and step in and fill in that gap. Now again, let's, well, yeah. Let's go to the verbal idea first. A child verbalizes something. Now, for the majority of toddlers, what type of things are they going to ask for? Are they really going to ask for things which are beneficial for them? Whether in terms of their physical needs, their emotional needs, their intellectual cognitive needs, or their spiritual needs? No, of course not. I mean, give, think about the average request or dua of a toddler to their parent, right? They'll say, you know, I want to watch TV, I want to watch movies, I want to play on a device, uh, what do you want to eat? I want candy, I want chocolate, and I want ice cream. If they, you know, had that power in their hand to just ask away everything and to have you respond to them, they'd say, look, I just want to play games, you know, go on a device all day or watch TV all day. And I want candy and chocolate and ice cream all day. That's all I want. I want junk food. That's what they, that's what they would ask for. Now, Although, I'm describing a toddler, but this sounds like some adults that I know as well, right? Now, as parents, what are our options? How would we respond to a child, a toddler in this situation? Well, clearly, there's three different ways you can respond. One is to agree to everything without condition, right? Just say yes, yes, right? You know, that famous idea of having a yes day. Whatever they ask, just say yes. This, you know, uh, extreme version of open, free parenting. Whatever the child says, you just have to say yes to. Now, what happens if you were to do that? Short term, would the child be happy? Of course they would, right? Because they get to play. I mean, they get to, you know, get what they, they get what they want. They get to watch TV. They get, you know, time on their screen or device. And they get the, the candy or food that they want. So, the yes for them feels really good. But what's going to happen to them long term? Obviously, this is going to mess with their mind. It's going to mess with their, um, their, their sleep habits, right? Especially if they're looking at screens all day. It's going to ruin their cognitive ability, especially if they're looking at screens, according to most studies, before the age of two. If they're eating junk food, again, that's got cognitive effects. It's got spiritual effects. It's going to have effects on their, their, their energy levels and everything. So the long term, it's going to be bad for them. And of course, all you parents who know, this is bad for you as well. That's why grandparents can do things like this. Grandparents can give their grandchildren devices. They can give them you know, chocolate and candy and junk food. Why? Because they don't have to deal with the long-term effects because they can send them home with their kids. Like, okay, they tell their own children, you know, you can go home and you deal with their, you know, their sugar crash or their complaints. We don't have to deal with that. That's the benefit of, of grandparents or uncles or aunts or whatever. They don't have to deal with the long-term repercussions and effects and the consequences. But the parents have to deal with that. So when you say yes to all these things, in a sense, you're ruining the child. You're not doing what's really for their benefit. Not, neither for the parent's benefit, it doesn't help them, nor does it help the child. Now, what about another way of answering? Well, let's go to that. If you can recite a salawat, ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, the extreme other opposite is just saying no. Just saying no, no. That's it. All right, the other sort of extreme. The sort of what we call, you know, authoritarian or very, you know, disciplinary parenting. I know what's best for you, you're not getting this. Done. Right? End of discussion, period. Right? This very forceful way of doing it. Now, are there any harms here? Absolutely. The harms are short-term and long-term. Now, the short-term harm is probably going to be from the child. Right? They're going to scream, they're going to have a tantrum. So that's going to be a harm for you. And you're allowing that child to engage in that sort of tantrum-like behavior. That's also not good for them. So that's not going to help either party short-term. Long-term, it's also bad for both parties. How? Well, if, you, if we get in the habit of just saying no, 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 without actually explaining anything, then what's going to happen is there's two possibilities. Either later on, that child, when they reach an, a level where they have more independence, what are they going to do? What happens to kids when they, you know, 
reach the quote unquote terrible twos or even older, when they get some sort of more independence, they start talking back to their, their parents. They start becoming rebellious. Everything their parents say, they go against. Why? Because you didn't give them that freedom when they were younger. You didn't allow them to develop. So later on, you know, they get a card, they get a device, whatever it is, they're going to go out and express their nafs, their ego, as much as they want. Look at what happens to all these uh, child celebrities who are kept in very disciplinary households, right? You know, people like Michael Jackson, for example. He was kept in a very strict environment, right? Just allowed to you know, practice his singing and dancing and all the things that were, you know, very, very you know, rough childhood. Child actors are the same way, right? They're uh, forced to do these, you know, specific things. And they never get to live as children. What happens when they get older? Drugs, usually overdose, suicide, mental health issues. You know, they literally have, you know, they have all these issues. They go wild. Why? Because even though they might be numerically older, they might be adults in terms of their body, inside they're still a child that's never lived what they wanted. They've never acted out what they really wanted. They never knew how to regulate their behavior because their parents weren't there to help them. When they were asking for something, the parents just said no. So they had no way to take care of what their needs were. So you might say, okay, well, what is the proper way to handle it then? Right? The proper way then is the third response, which is to respond to the child, either with a yes or no, depending on the situation, but to respond with a causal explanation, but doing so out of love and explaining it with love. And that's something which takes a lot of patience and a lot of wisdom. It's not an easy thing to do. When your child is asking for something, sometimes even, you know, somebody else in your family, what a good parent has to do is to look at what does my child actually need? When they're saying that they want ice cream or junk food or TV or this, this, there's something behind their words that I need to look for. If I can break that iceberg, if I can go beyond the tip of the iceberg and look for what's under there, then I can try to handle that, right? I have to be a good parent and do that. Maybe if they're asking for screen time, it's because right now, what they really need is quality time with me. They want to spend time with me. They want to play with me as a mother or father. But I'm not giving it to them. So they know that from the device, from a TV show, they can get full attention. They're not getting it from me. So I, they're going to go there. So maybe that means, hey, you know, maybe you offer an alternative. You know, maybe later on we can do that. But right now, why don't we go outside for a walk? Or why don't we go this or that, right? Again, there's many, I don't want to give specifics because it's going to depend on the child and your relationship there. Or if they're asking again for ice cream or junk food, well, maybe it's because they're actually hungry and they don't know it. And, you know, as a parent, you should know that, look, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, ice cream sounds good. Chocolate sounds good. Let me make you a plate of food. And then after you have so-and-so amount, then yeah, we can go get ice cream, right? So you're conditionally giving them a yes answer. You're not completely saying no, but you're showing them that, look, if you want to engage in these kind of short-term pleasures, fine. But there, have, there has to be a way that you can manage this. You have to learn how to manage your short-term pleasure. You can't just go after short-term pleasure, dunyawi, worldly, egotistical pleasures your whole life. When we show and train our kids from a young age, they'll develop that skill set, you know, as they get older. So we have to look. Are they looking for attention? Are they, you know, really hungry? Or, in the worst-case scenario, are they just copying my behavior? Have they seen me in front of a screen all the time? And that's why they're doing the same thing. Have they seen me grab a bag of chips or, you know, open up a whole pint of ice cream and eat it in one sitting? Maybe they're just copying my bad, you know, my bad habits. I'm the bad role model here. Why would we blame the children for that? If I'm stuck on my phone while my child is trying to talk to me, then, you know, when we want to go and interact with them, they're going to say, you know, I want a screen too. Because when I tried to get attention from you, you said a screen is more important. That's a better relationship to have. So I'm, I see you, monkey see, monkey do. I'm going to go do the same thing. So when you want to come to me or when I need to feel that connection, I'm going to go to a device as well. So we have to be, caref be careful and see what sort of behavior do we model in our households. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I want to leave you with one question tonight because we are out of time. So this question I want you to think about. Ask to yourself and then for those, if you discuss with your family afterwards, think about this. We talked about a toddler and their relationship, even if they're verbal, their relationship with their parents, and a parent looking beyond what they're asking. Our question is this. Our reflection has to be this. What sort of du'as am I making to Allah? Are the things that I'm asking for Allah, am I talking to him like I'm a toddler? Like I'm a little kid? Do I really know what I want? Do I really know what's good for me? 
Is the language that I'm using like a toddler? Is my mannerism like a toddler? Am I modeling correct behavior? What exactly am I doing? So what I want you to think about is that. Is the relationship that we have with Allah, are we acting like little children? Think about this and we'll continue our topic tomorrow night, inshallah. If you can recite another salawat, ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Okay, so I'll skip the uh, summary and we'll just move right on to the quiz because you know, we're, running, uh, yeah, we're running out of time. So hopefully enough people have logged in, inshallah. Okay, yeah, we don't want to wait, wait too much more, but okay, so assalamu alaikum to everybody, to another, a Sayyid, no, that's obviously somebody who misspelled Sayyid, so nice try. Labayk ya Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Jahid Jan Muhammad, Filinta, Plato, I hope I said that right, Muzam al Jan Muhammad, Ya Allah, please give me the knowledge to get one? To get one what? To get first place maybe? I think it got cut off, right? Uh, to Christops, the Jessas, SP. Okay, maybe we'll wait for one or two more and then we'll get started, inshallah. Specialist again, Mahdi Jaffer. KQ. Who can that be? And, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Sarkar, SY. Okay. How old was the ninth Imam? Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam, when he became the youngest shaheed out of all the ma'asumin. So we asked this the other night, but I made a typo and I put 10th by accident, right? Because we were, you know, uh, speaking about the ninth imam, but I made a mistake of putting 10th in the quiz. So if you remember, it's the same question from last time, but this is actually the ninth. So remember, he's the youngest shaheed out of all the imams. <clears throat> So most of you remembered that it was 25 years old, according to most narrations, that he became shaheed. Okay, next question. Which corner of the Kaaba opened up for Fatima bint Asad and is still cracked to this day, right? There are four corners of the Kaaba. Which of those corners had opened up for Fatima bint Asad? Right? We know this four. The Ruknul al-Iraqi, the Ruknul al-Yamani, Ruknul al-Shami, or Ruknul al-Aswad. So which of these is still cracked to this day as well? Ahsan, so most of you knew that as well. So Rukun al-Yamani is the one that's cracked. Definitely not Rukun al-Aswad. That's where the Hajr al-Aswad is, right? That's where the black stone is. So, uh, yeah, that would have been a big problem if that one was cracked. How long did Fatima bint Asad stay in the Kaaba? Was it five hours? 14 hours, three days, or one week. So many of us may think that, you know, kind of she just walked in, gave birth, and came right out. But our narration says something a little different. Well, most of you actually got this right. Well, three days. So she had gone in, was there for three full days, and then on the 13th of Rajab is when she, when it opened up and she came out there with Amir uh, al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. Okay, last question, which of course is our usual random one. How many legs do butterflies have? Four, zero, two, or six? And sometimes these questions that you know, uh, slide or randomly generates are really insane. Needless to say, I was very shocked at this answer too. Wow, a good amount of you knew that as well. well. Maybe because you Googled it, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, I mean, I had no idea that they have six butterflies. Really interesting. Okay, let's see. Okay, who took first place today? So first place, uh, once again. Oh, most of you got all, you know, four out of four, right? So good job to all of you. And in fact, it looks like, no, so it's a tie for, for third, first place, for three-way three tie. Plato, specialists, and Labekia Imam. 
because all of you got it all in, in uh, 20 sec 26 seconds. So congratulations to all of you. I think this is the first time that, that happened, right? And then tied for second place are KQ, which could be, I don't know, Kazim, I don't know, it could be anything. So I don't know who that is, but congratulations. And then also to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Although he should have been first, but I mean, you picked the wrong name because uh, that name should never come in fifth place. So, um, a wiladat and Eid Mubarak to all of you. And inshallah, we will see you tomorrow night as we commemorate the Shahada of Bibi Zainab alayhi salatu wa salam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli bayti tayyibina tahirin. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا وارث آدم صفة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كليم الله السلام عليك يا وارث إيسا روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام ولي الله السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المصطفى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر المعطور أشهد أنك قد أقمت الصلاة وأتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونحيت عن المنكر وأتعت الله ورسوله وأتعتك اليقين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سميت بذلك فرزيت بي يا مولاي يا با عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأسلاب الشامقة والأرحام المتحرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مدل همات ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دائم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التقي الرزي الزكي الحادي المحتي وأشهد أن الأئمة من ولدك كلمة التقوى وألام الهدى والأروة الوثقى والحجة والأحل الدنيا وأشهد الله ملائكة وأنبياه ورسلا أني بكم مؤمن وبيا بكم موكين بشرع ديني وخواتمي عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم ولا أرواحكم ولا أجسادكم ولا أجسامكم ولا شاهدكم ولا غائبكم ولا ظاهركم ولا باطنكم السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله 
السلام علیک ابن امیر المومنین السلام علیک ابن الحسین الشہید السلام علیک ایوہ الشہید السلام علیک ایوہ المظلوم و ابن المظلوم لان اللہ امتان قتلتک ولان اللہ امتان ظلمتک ولان اللہ امتان سمیت بذالک فرزیت بی السلام علیکم یا اولیاء اللہ و احباء السلام علیکم یا اصفیاء اللہ و عبداء السلام علیکم یا انصار دین اللہ السلام علیکم یا انصار رسول اللہ السلام علیکم یا انصار امیر المؤمنین السلام علیکم یا انصار فاطمت سیدت نساء العالمین السلام علیکم یا انصار ابی محمد الحسن ابن علی الولی الزکیح الناس السلام علیکم یا انصار ابی عبداللہ بی ابی انتم و امی تبتم وطابت الارض اللذی فیہا دفنتم وفزتم فوزا عظیما فیا لیتنی کنتم آکم فافوزا ماکم السلام علیکہ یا ابل فضل الاباس ابن امیر المؤمنین السلام علیکہ یا ابن سید الوسیین السلام علیکہ یا ابن اول القوم اسلاما واکتمہم ایمانا وَأَقْوَمِهِمْ بِدِينِ اللَّهِ وَأَحْوَتِهِمْ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ أَشْهَدُ لَكَ إِدْنَ سَهْتَ لِلَّهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِأَخِيكَ فَنِعْمَ الْأَخُو الْمُوَاسِي فَلَانَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً قَتَلَتْكَ وَلَانَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً زَلَمَتْكَ وَلَانَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً اِسْتَحَلَّتْ مِنْكَ الْمَهَارِ وَنِعْمَ السَّابِرُ الْمُجَاهِدُ الْمُحَامِ النَّاصِرُ وَلَقُ الدَّافِي وَنَقِي الْمُجِيبُ إِلَى تَعْتِ رَبِّهِ الرَّاغِبِ فِي مَا زَيْدَ فِي غَيْرُهُ مِنَ الثَّوَابِ الْجَزِيلِ وَالثَّنَاءِ الْجَمِيلِ وَالْحَقَّكَ اللَّهُ بِدَرَجَةِ آبَائِكَ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي تَعْرَزْتُ لِزِيَارَةِ أَوْلِيَائِكَ رَغْبَتَانْ فِي ثَوَابِكَ وَرَجَانْ لِمَغْفِرَتِكَ وَجَزِي لِإِحْسَانِكَ فَأَسْأَلُكَ أَنْ تُسَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلِهِ التَّوَاهِرِينَ وَأَنْ تَجْعَلَ الرِّزْقِ بِهِمْ دَارًا وَأَيْشِ بِهِمْ قَارًا وَزِيَارَةِ بِهِمْ مَقْبُولًا وَحَيَاتِ بِهِمْ تَيِّبًا وَأَدْرِجْنِي دْرَاجَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ وَجْعَلْنِي مِمَّنْ يَنْقَلِبُ مِنْ زِيَارَةِ مَشَاهِدِ أَحِبَّائِكْ مُفْلِحَانْ مَنْجِحَا قَدْ اِسْتَوْجَبَ غُفْرَانَ الظُّنُوبِ وَسَطْرَ الْأُيُوبِ وَقَشْفَ الْقُرُوبِ إِنَّكَ أَحْلُ التَّقْوَى وَأَحْلُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ السلام علیکہ یا سعادتی و موالیہ جمیعا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ السلام علیکہ یا مولا و ابن مولا السلام علیکہ یا غریب الغربا السلطان ابو الحسن علی ابن موسی الرضا کن شفیونا و شفی والدین فی یوم الجزا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ السلام علیکہ یا امام صاحب الاسری والزمان الامان 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 السلام علیکہ یا خلیفت الرحمن السلام علیکہ یا شریک القرآن السلام علیکہ یا کعبت الایمان السلام علیکہ یا امام الانس والجان اجو اللہ تعالی فرجک و سحر اللہ تعالی مخرجک و زہورک و جالن من انسارک و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ اللہم کل ولیکا الحجت ابن الحسن صلواتکا علیہ وعلا بائیہ فی حاد السعتی وفی کل ساعة ولیا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودلیلا وعینا 
ಹತ್ತ ನಹು ಅರ್ಧಕ ಮತ್ತೆ